Hey, how's it going? Today is 4th of uh, September, Wednesday, and we are taking a look at the market, what kind of things you can find. In today's video, let's take a look at infrastructure, parties or services, right? So that will be train services. I haven't read it, but that will be very important, real services and what government is doing. They might be announcing some information up there as well as uh, if they were uh, announcing anything. Uh, if there is a person, how to reach out to this person? <laughs> Very common sense approach, right? If there is a person, perhaps that then there would be a lot of people reaching out for all kind of reasons, right? <laughs> perhaps quality of services, all those kind of things, right? So now, uh, if we're gonna be taking a look at this article, right? Perhaps for some time we're gonna to need to detox uh, from what's happening in UK, <laughs> and we're gonna be taking a look at the rest of the world, right? But uh, for today, let's stick to UK and see what's happening. Since UK, for whatever reason, got very quiet. <laughs> UK is not projecting of what the UK is doing, right? So it's great. So whatever they decided to go this kind of direction, it's. Uh, UK's decision, let's uh, reflect and see what the uh, rest of the world is doing now. But either way, today we're still gonna be taking a look at the UK, right? That would be establishing a shadow Great British Railway. The government will begin uh, delivering improvements for rail passengers and freight users straight away. So something that was published yesterday, let's try to understand it. Today, uh, or it would be yesterday, 3rd of September 2024, I'm announcing it will be introducing CEO of Network Rail, the Director General of Rail Services and Department for Transport, and CEO of DFD OLR Holdings Ltd, which are potentially the company, right? To establish a shadow grade between uh, railways as a main organization responsible for the operational railway. They will be working closely to uh, or collaborating, bringing together a track and train to deliver passengers and freight users ahead of legislation to create Great British Railway and arms length body right? I don't know how much of that would be uh, perhaps, or oh, they've been looking for a lot of consulting services, right? So perhaps they, uh, I hope uh, they have been advised of how to operate and manage the service a little bit better compared to how things are being done right now. Right? Our manifesto committee to putting passengers at the heart of the services by reforming the railway and now bringing them into public ownership. Great British Railway will be creating or delivering one unified system that focuses on reliable, affordable, high quality and effective services along with ensuring safety and uh, accessibility. In other words, a centralized system and only passengers I would highly recommend uh, if there are value add solutions that other governments are doing in Europe, which I've been discussing with, uh, not necessarily just passengers, so they can add more value. So taxpayers do not need to subsidize some of the services, right? But again, there's no contact information, there's nothing. <laughs> so that's where things are. Uh, uh, Great British Rail will put passengers back at the heart of the railway and introduce new measures to protect their interests. This will include paving the way for powerful new passengers watchdog. Okay, but this, uh, the, this particular statement is sort of bad, but either way. So perhaps more monitoring and or increased controls when it comes to monitoring or process cameras, face uh, facial recognition, tracking, or biometric sign. <laughs> the passenger standards authority to independently monitor standards and champion improvements in services, reforming against range of measures. Great British Railway will reform the ticket system to meet simpler or passengers drive in innovation. Uh, across the network to replace the current merit of ticket types and maximize passengers' growth. There will be statutory duty of a Great British Rail to promote the use of rail pride alongside overall growth targets set by Secretary of State. The government will be including safeguard to ensure that freight operations continue to receive 
better access to the network, open access operations have proven track record to drive competition and or better passenger outcomes. I completely disagree with uh, this statement. I don't think there is anything about fair. Uh, things being overpriced, uh, that, that's what's fair. <laughs> For uh, quality of services are very bad and things being overpriced. <laughs> it's a very high level. <laughs> so that's what's fair. And there would be a case that open access operations can add value and get past the network they will be able to do. This part is very important, so they could potentially take a look at what European friends are doing. And how some of those initiatives, for example, where you need to know you can or purchase a ticket that would be monthly tickets, all those kind of things. So that would drive additional uh, revenue and uh, how friends in Europe are doing it. Uh, there's different, I, I never used any of those services, but I was taking a look at something that was started about six or eight months ago as well as plane tickets, all those kind of things, where they would have number of hours, all those kind of things, how new systems would be introduced and uh, that could add and or bring more revenue compared to you now, where taxpayers need to subsidize all these operations. So, so definitely they need to make some changes if taxpayers need to step in and pay for that. <laughs> While primary legislation is required to initiate change to public ownership and establish uh, GBR, this government will bring delivery improvements for passengers and private users straight away. This is why I'm taking the immediate steps on of standing off Shadow Grid British Railways today. The third organization will work collaboratively taking a wall system approach to decision making and driving improvements while retaining their existing accountabilities and duties. I don't know, I don't know. They're looking to centralize, but as well as, I don't know, I don't know, the, perhaps they do know something about, well, I don't, I guess, <laughs> why they need to constantly do things in this particular manner, where they would say that they will give more uh, freedoms to all uh, service providers, but again, while taking those freedoms uh, away at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, it might be optics, right? That they're doing something, but well, actually they're not doing anything, right? We're achieving a change of uh, how organizations work together quickly, but the change is on the ground. Uh, for those who use the railway, it will take time. <laughs> Our railways are fragmented and have been for decades, suffering from a short-sighted investments approaches and not provide the services passengers and private customers need. Delivering change for passengers will rely on building new levels of trust, openness and transparency across the industry while delivering teams brought together that reflect our customers and communities uh, we serve, setting a tone for reform on uh, enabling us to create modern and affordable railway for everyone in Britain, right? Uh, means the more bureaucracy, right? That they will pretend that they're doing something while someone will get paid for pretending to do something while not actually solving anything. <laughs> At least they have recognized that entire equipment and all the hardware as the trains uh, getting older and needs a lot of updating and additional investments and perhaps someone is interested in investing in all of that. While well, all the process and everything would be overseed by additional people who will get paid by some of those companies, right? Which this statement is great. <laughs>
I expect them to work together with the Shadow Grey Lucas Jailer. Okay, okay, okay. Let's progress to the next article, right? Uh, since everything's still in motion and uh, there isn't a way to reach out to any of these departments, uh, perhaps we should progress to do thinking about something else, right? <laughs> That will be transferred to Secretary of Fire's uh, starting gun uh, on real reform and public ownership bill reach final stage in Commons, right? So this uh, entire thing is still in motion, right? So let's progress to the next article instead, right? Uh, since we're taking a look at real, right, and uh, sometimes I know a similar process where some of those prices can be optimized and all these kind of things, right? So that's just a pushback, perhaps oversight of entire operations is needed. Uh, it's just the tax money. So if taxpayers need to pay for real services, the entire sector needs such a massive reform. So this is uh, where things should be, how services being subsidized and I would say taxpayers not necessarily need to get all money taxpayers money need to get involved into, into this so it happens that the government just starts regulating the entire market and the, when it's pricing all this kind of things right but either way <laughs> let's progress and let's take a look at Google right US antitrust trial uh, targets Google's digital ad business right uh, we have been taking a look at Google and what's happening and uh, that's the Department of Justice. Uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we were taking a look at some of the congressional hearings and the definition for the session uh, could be then Google would fire 12 Senate members. So after Google had fired 12 of those, that would be quote unquote recession happening for Google, right? Would then uh, Senate, since Google do not have that much control, uh, I would say, <laughs> according to uh, yesterday's idea, right? So now Google is facing a lot of uh, legal battles, right? And some of the business practices, while well, back then it was okay, then Google was very profitable to operate as a monopoly, quote unquote, right? Which it was uh, fine to be a monopoly, right? Uh, some of those business practices, and but the uh, entire story is unfolding right now. Then uh, Google is not doing that well financially, right? <laughs> so then it's a problem. <laughs> then you can't pay your way out of uh, <laughs> just this quote unquote, right? <laughs> but either way, so I thought it might be interesting article to take a look at, and we can take a look at some of the bullet points that this article is going to be about uh, the uh, DOT or Department of Justice seek to break Google's digital advertising business. Uh, Google accused of shutting competitors out of the advertising technology market. Google's argue breakup will slow innovation, raise fees, harm small businesses. Just now. It had to be done 10 years ago. <laughs> but that's where things are, right? <laughs> Uh, that would be 4th of September, today's date, Alphabet, uh, subsidiary Google, Google faces trial in the second antitrust case next week, where United States Department of Justice will challenge how the surge giant monetized advertising chart system that prosecutes, say, uh, prosecutors say harms news publishers, right? So let's try to understand it. So I have read this part, so I thought it might be actually important. Other than, I, I don't really care. I don't care. I don't care that they have a monopoly on the market and how dominated they are in the entire market. I did a little bit uh, of the history. And in the beginning, it was very hard since there uh, up there was actually a lot of search engines and some of the actions that had to be taken by Google to build what they have built so uh, let's recognize this part right it wasn't easy and uh financial troubles this is what it leads to i guess <laughs> oh shit <laughs> i guess the case is part of the uh, current uh, presidential uh, administration efforts to rein big tech through antitrust laws and follow the major win for the justice department in Separate lawsuit on August 5th when a judge found the Google 
illegally monetize online search, right? It, if that came as a surprise to anyone, for me it didn't. <laughs> well, the case focus on Google's ubiquitous search engines that try to begin. Uh, there is a location, a uh, home of let's go. Con conspic Google is technology that connect website publishers and advertisers. Like, again, we're not promoting any of these services, right? I will highly recommend take a look at the market and consider uh, alternatives, perhaps. If, if you were to take a look at the market and look for different search engines, you might find even better solutions right up there. Uh, but it's just my opinion coming into this. I'm not. I'm trying not to. I know it, most of the searches that I'm doing, I'm doing on completely different search engines, by the way. I'm finding completely different results. <laughs> Sometimes I have to use it just because uh, I have that option available where I'm using different search engines. And I would highly uh, advise and <laughs> consider the alternative side. Right? Uh, let's close this video. I'm not interested in the way how this article has been presented. Uh, we're taking a look at and we in advertently promoting uh, more of these services. I would highly recommend to perhaps take a look at the market. And even if we take a look at uh, some of those AI services, uh, there are some of those available in Europe as well. Uh, thanks for watching, see you next one.